Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. Renowned actor comedian Eddie Izzard is returning to the New York stage in a solo performance of Charles Dickens' masterwork, Great Expectations. Adapted for the stage by Mark Izzard, it is directed by Selena Cadell and will play a limited engagement at the Greenwich House Theater from December 9th through January 22nd. And I caught up with Eddie and company right before their first preview. Welcome back to New York. How does it feel? It feels very good to be back in New York because New York for me is, um, I think I have certain home gigs and this is like, ah, home again in New York. Um, I'm home in London, I'm home in Paris, I'm home in, in Berlin, um, in Australia, going to Sydney as well. It just, it's, um, it's rather odd because I, maybe it's a world citizen, you know, the idea of, you know, you're born in, I was born in Yemen, uh, actually. So um, the idea that I think people are people and I like to see people, and people who have a get up and go thing, which is New York personified. So um, I can never understand why New John Lennon said, right, I'm going to New York, you know, when I was a kid. I go, well, what the, is the essence of New York? But it is, it's kind of everything happens here and you have politics and business and, and creativity and everything. So, yeah, being here, and Dickens was here yeah. and he played the, um, he played the Steinway Hall, because Steinway had not only the pianos, but the hall to play it in, 2000 seaters. So, uh, 155 years ago, he was playing here, and I'm 150 years younger than Dickens to the day, which is just a bit bizarre. It doesn't actually mean anything, but I've decided to run with it, and great expectations. I've never read, the, the story of this is I've never read a work of literature. Dyslexic, severely atypically dyslexic, so reading terribly long time to read anything. And I thought, if I get do an audiobook of it, then a, a company will pay me, and then they'll, I'll sign on a dotted line, and I'll have to read the book. This is kind of beautiful thing, forcing me to read a work of literature. So, Great Expectations was chosen. I read the 20 hours of book. It's out there, downloadable at someone's leisure for the majesty of the whole book. Uh, but then I thought, because of Richard Pryor's stand-up technique of having characters going, hey, what's this? I don't know, you, you think what I want to... Just turning and talking to each other, which I did all throughout my stand-up. Very influenced by Richard on that. And I thought, use that technique in drama as well. And so now we have uh, Great Expectations playing 19 characters. Some of them are composite characters. Or, but um, the great characters, if, if anyone knows the story, Pip and Magwitch and uh, Joe is there, Mrs. Joe for a while until she dies. Um, uh, spoiler alert! Um, and Estelle and uh, Havisham so yes as a trans woman playing these characters is I think great very 21st century and uh, yeah I'm loving it well it's absolutely thrilling I mean it's like a you know a dream you can't really believe it in fact I don't really believe it I'm standing here in the off-Broadway world of you know New York it's absolutely thrilling really couldn't be more excited so that's nice how did this all come about for you, Mark? It came about with Eddie proposing uh, over a dinner table, I think. We were in Caen, in France. Eddie was doing a, a, a comedy gig, which he does at, uh, around the time of D-Day. He does it in three languages, so we were there, and uh, he said he had this idea to take great expectations, a one-person show to, uh, to Edinburgh and uh, he, his main task, his first task was obviously to cut down the book into something that could be read out or performed in about under 90 minutes, 90 minutes or under, and would I be prepared to help him? So I said yes. And uh, getting back from Carl, I started work on it because I was fairly unbusy at the time. And um, I made some progress with the first part and I, I phoned him to see how he was getting on and he said he hadn't done anything and he was busy so I just bashed on. And in a couple of months it was done really. So um, it needed to be, the idea of having a deadline was important. So, But it was for Edinburgh and it was, I, I, I kind of imagined he was going to read it because I didn't really expect him to learn it. So. There was no real pressure on me. I mean, Dickens is an established writer. I mean, nobody can claim that the quality of his writing, or they, they have to dislike Dickens to say that, you know, it's no good. So I didn't have to worry about that. The main task was just really to compress it and to pick a way through the story, because I realized there was too much in the story for it all to appear in 90 minutes. You know, film versions confirmed that. Like the set is gorgeous, the yeah. lighting, everything about this. Like as you're standing here in your theater, which you're going to take over through January 22nd, what it means to you? Well, it's wonderful to get this uh, performance, Great Expectations, just 
down by myself, up and on a stage with a good design, with great lighting, with great music, um, just to, to, to launch the ship. Because COVID has been in the middle of the, the, we started it as a work in progress. It developed into previews. Um, and to, to actually launch it is great because it's just taken quite a long time to get to this place uh, with COVID getting in the way. Um, and so I'm eager for it to get on its feet. And also I've very rarely done it show after show after show after show. In my life I have, but not with this show because I've done one there and then one there um, in, in different places. So to get into a run is going to be great. And it's already, the ticket's already selling well, which is beautiful. And I think the people of New York, I know how sharp people of New York are and uh, Dickens had kind of a love-hate relationship with America but a lot of people loved his stories and it's very American dreamish and you know he was a kid from well lower middle class beginnings but he wanted to get it out it all and he got it all had a tough life it, it all went this way and that way and had a, a love child with someone that was stillborn and oh, it wasn't great with his wife had 10 kids I don't know if he wanted 10 kids but he created all this, these wonderful stories and characters. And to be able to bring some to life right here, just on my own, yeah. is fun. Using Richard Pryor's technique, I just think that's kind of beautiful. Yeah. 21st century. Well, for a start, Eddie is a complete one-off. I mean, her analytical brain, she is a kind of, she's an encyclopedia of information. She's a, you know, historian, politician. There is so much, and Mark too, is a sharp, as anything, so the two of them bring, you know, such knowledge to the table about the time, about the Victorian world, about what what happened with Dickens, about what he did, or what the social, you know, messages of the time were. So we're not talking about people who don't know anything. They are absolutely fabulous minds of information, both of them. And then, of course, Eddie. Well, I mean, there isn't anybody else like Eddie. She's a one-off miracle of creativity. And, you know, she, her brain is very, very quick. Actually, both of them have a very quick, sharp thing. Mine's much slower. I take things in rather slowly, and I think about the words. And So there's an interesting kind of... Sometimes there's a bit of a um, discrepancy between the thinking and the doing of something. But we work it with such a team. It's an absolutely fantastic collaboration. We sometimes spar a bit. And that's great. We have a great, great time challenging each other and, you know, really working things out. I mean, you, we couldn't do this otherwise. If we didn't get on, we couldn't do it. And we laugh. We laugh a hell of a lot. It's such a pleasure to have you back. When this was first announced here, we were so excited. The theatre community and everything else. You know, I spoke to Vanessa Redgrave. I spoke to so many wonderful people who've done one-person shows. And they said, it's scary, but it's also exhilarating and exciting. But you're used to being up there by yourself. Yes, yes, I am. This. I have done so many hours on my own on stage and you know some people do talk about there's a loneliness I don't have any loneliness I have all the characters that I'm interacting with so I really do live through those characters lives yeah. um, but I also think the audience is with me so it's like I, I'm sort of have a, a oneness with them so I'm never really a, alone but yeah it is beautiful and also you can do it when you want you can say I could say, tomorrow afternoon, I'll do a show of Greta just there. And you could go and do it. That's, that's a crazy thing. I do love that uh, ability. And um, yeah, and you know, excitement in New York. We're coming up to Christmas, Christmas in New York. This isn't, this starts at Christmas. Great Expectations, people might not know this because Christmas Carol, of course, is about Christmas. But, but Great Expectations actually starts at Christmas time with a, a very scary thing and a, and a villain called Magwitch and a small boy called Pip. And, but it's, it starts in there and then it ends also in December but it's it's an, much more of an epic story much well no that's actually there that's not the right way to say it it is an epic story as Christmas Carol is in a different way but uh, yeah it's gonna be beautiful doing it here in New York at Christmas time <laughs>